thank you again for uh, hosting another Museum Monday. It's great to be out on the battlefield with you. Uh, have you ever been to this spot before? No, I have not. Okay, well, this is Barlow's Knoll. It's uh, named after Union General Francis Barlow. And his statue is uh, the one right across the road there. Uh, he commands some men in the Union Army's 11th Corps. And on July 1st, 1863, he'll occupy this little knoll that we're on right now. And really, he does because it's the only high ground around. It's the only good position for some of his artillery, uh, including the guns that are right behind us, Battery G, 4th United States Artillery. Now, the commander of this battery was a young guy by the name of Bayard Wilkson. He positions his uh, artillery up on the knoll here, and by the afternoon of July 1st, 1863, he's involved in some pretty uh, ferocious fighting that's going on between his guns up on top of Barlow's Knoll and a Confederate battery, which is just down the road. Now, today you'll see that trees cover most of our front here, but in 1863 it would have been much more open. Uh, during this um, battery duel that's going on, Wilkson's actually wounded. Uh, and I want to take you back to the Museum and Visitor Center to talk a little bit about what happened to him and uh, share his story, which I think is a really powerful one. Do so you want to head to the museum? Let's go. All right, oh, well, we left the battlefield behind. Uh, we're now back in the museum galleries. And you remember we were on Barlow's Knoll talking about that young 19-year-old battery commander named Bayard Wilkinson. During the fighting, he's severely wounded. His leg is hit by a Confederate artillery shell fragment. And he actually uses the sash that's in the case behind us. It's his sash would have worn around his waist. He uses that to create a tourniquet. And with a pen knife that he was carrying with him, he actually amputates what's left of his leg. And he survives long enough to be brought to a field hospital, most likely the Alms County Poor House, which was just a short distance from where we were out in the battlefield. Uh, and that evening, this young 19-year-old man, uh, he dies, he succumbs to his wounds. There's another kind of tragic layer to this story, though. His father, Samuel Wilkson, is actually a correspondent for the New York Times. And he arrives on the battlefield uh, not long after his son uh, died, and he writes a dispatch to his newspaper, literally from the, the fresh grave of his son. So it's an incredibly tragic story, obviously. Wow. I don't know if you had a chance to read the uh, quote we have back here, but I think it's a really powerful quote uh, from Wilkinson, the father, as he's writing about the Battle of Gettysburg alongside his uh, son's grave. If you mind, uh, we can close with that quote. Oh, that quote. would be great, yes. So Wilkinson writes, Who can write the history of a battle whose eyes are immovably fastened upon a central figure of transcendingly important interest, the dead body of an oldest born? Wow. And that's how he ended his, his uh, time at Gettysburg. Yeah. Well, again, Elle, thanks for uh, allowing me to take you around the battlefield and through the museum, and we Thank hope you. to see you at the next Museum Monday.